Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for February, excuse me, for March 1st, 2022. Well, my goodness, yesterday we had quite a roller coaster ride where the market just kind of gyrated around the big gap that we had yesterday morning. Um, the bulls trying to come in to finish up the end of the month, but this morning we have a little bit of bearishness showing up in the charts. So, what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. So when we look at these charts, we clearly see that we have quite a lot of volatility in the price action. These are big point swings that are moving in the market. And unfortunately, that really favors the intraday trader, not so much the swing trader or position trader, because we can't really guarantee or have any confidence that the market will be in the have the same attitude just the next morning we kind of have that situation today where we've had three upside days here in the market yesterday being more of an inside day and then this morning we're looking at a possible reversal um, here in the Dow now let's keep in mind that we are still in a downtrend and we struggled although we had quite a bit of price action movement yesterday we didn't really resolve anything here in the diamonds chart we were not able to get up there and break through that resistance to the upside and now we're seeing a little bit of bearishness but keep in mind guys it is possible that we could see a choppy range in that chart we could go sideways out here toward that trend before we make that decision so that is possible and we're spilling off a little bit of this volatility candles might be starting to get a little bit smaller unfortunately um, there are satellite images now that russia has a massive convoy it looks like it's headed for kiev and uh, probably the little peace talks thing that they had yesterday was nothing more than a stall tactic, which seems kind of um, exactly why, what uh, Vladimir Putin would do. And as you can see, we have some um, possibility that if we see those sellers come in, I don't think it gets bad unless we break that level right there of support. If those bears come in and push us down through there, that's where we could have a major problem problem and sentiment could really turn here in the market kind of blowing up this little relief rally but if we can hold sideways in here or if we can get those bulls to push hard enough to to ever break through that resistance we still have this upside trend and just massive levels of this resistance above to challenge um, those bulls as we try to rally so we've got a lot of work here to do in the chart and again technically guys I don't want to belabor the point but our technicals here just are not looking good 34 EMA down through the 200 the 50 day is closing in on that 200 day really quickly and we have a zone of resistance in this chart right through this area that is absolutely massive and if we can even get through these we just have a big wall up there to try and climb let's take a look at our spy very much the same in the spy however the spy managed to do maybe just a slightly bit better in um, the chart because we pushed above that resistance level in the chart on the spy but unfortunately if you look at this chart on the SPY, we still have huge levels of price resistance above that we're going to have to deal with. And of course, our downtrend remains in force. Now, once again, it is possible we could kind of consolidate sideways here. But if those bears get going, I would want to watch this level right in here pretty carefully, because if we were to break back down through there, I would think that the sentiment of the market could turn pretty quickly. So watch that carefully if those bears push down through that level if the bulls can find that energy to push up and continue to test this resistance level in the chart we may even test that downtrend in the SPY but be really really careful here because um, as you know we can just 
whipsaw, we can test those resistance levels and whipsaw it right back out substantially. Um, so be careful with over trading this market. And again, our technicals here in the, in the SPY, probably one of the better index charts right now in the SPY with that 50 day moving average still showing a separation from the 200. But notice that our 34 EMA is just now crossing down through that 200. We're creating a massive zone of resistance in this chart as well. And then if we take a look at the QQQ, QQQ still has some substantial problems. And although it was able to break back through that little resistance or uh, uh, level in the chart. I want you to kind of focus in on the fact that we still have an absolutely massive resistance chart in price action just above that. Downtrend is still in play and although we might test that downtrend as resistance, keep in mind all these resistance levels in the chart are going to be it almost like we need to have something happen like um, like Russia pull back or something like that to really um, change this um, dark cloud that we have over the market right now. So watch that closely. And if those bears were to get going here again, this is going to be kind of an important level. If we were to lose that again, um, in the chart that could be problematic here for the NASDAQ. So watch that carefully. And our technicals here are just awful. Um, 50 crossing down through the 200, we have our 34 EMA and our 28 uh, simple, um, certainly uh, well below that 200 day. So our technical patterns here, setting up the possible death cross here on the NASDAQ, not exactly what we wanna see if you're a bull. Um, let's take a look at the Russell. Russell also maintains this downtrend, but I got to tell you, I've been pleasantly surprised, I guess, even though I am holding a short position here on IWM, small short position at this point, um, but um, pleasantly surprised that it's been holding up a little bit better than the other indexes. We've been hanging in there doing pretty well, but Having said that, um, we want to take note of this resistance level here in the chart that kind of corresponds with that downtrend. And if we happen to get above that, well, then we just have a wall of resistance above. And if you take a look at the technicals here, they're actually pretty dismal with the 50 day moving down here, um, putting a, a cap on uh, the Russell in this area of the chart and uh, continuing to bear down on that price action. So kind of an ugly situation here in our indexes. And although we've had a lot of price movement, we really haven't repaired anything technically in the charts. Taking a look at the VIX here, as you can see, we have an upside trend maintaining um, in that chart. Although we've had that bullishness come into the market here the last three trading days, we have not been able to correct uh, correct this situation in the chart. We're still holding above, we closed yesterday above a 30 handle in that chart. That's well above that 25 handle, some big support area in the VIX chart. So let's watch that close. And if we do happen to get a little bit more pullback um, in this chart, let's just keep in mind, we've got these levels in here that could certainly hold us um, for more uncertainty here in the market. And that's and that's really the name of the game here right now. It's uncertainty. We don't know what happens yet, next, and there's just no way to, to suggest that we do know what happens next in the market. The next news report, we can't even hold it certainty for the next 15 minutes rather than um, a whole day or um, even a week period of time in moving in one direction. So be very, very careful in how you trade and realize that if you're an options trader, options are going to be very expensive because of the high implied volatility. Bid ask spreads will likely be wider because market makers are even protecting themselves in this wild volatility. So be very, very careful and plan your risk very carefully. Let's take a look at our T21, 20 
Now our T2122 yesterday, um, in that early bullishness that we had in the market, we picked up here and we, we touched right in here on that bearish reversal zone. And then we started to turn south a little bit and um, got a little bit heavy. We were down over 500 points just shortly before the market closed. And then just in a massive surge to the upside, we recovered about 300 of those points um before the close just huge price action swings of uncertainty here now taking a look at this chart as you can see t2122 we're pretty well stretched out here in this chart and um, up here in that bearish reversal zone so we'll want to keep a pretty close eye on that just in case that happens uh to um trail on lower here in the chart and unfortunately it looks like i've got this on the wrong chart setting so hopefully you can see most of that let's take a look at um here let me go just go ahead and shift well that's all right let's just take a look at our um t2108 t2108 also uh, showed a little improvement yesterday in that chart so we've got a little bit of hope here on that um, noticing that we are still in a downtrend but we're trying here uh, to hold a little bit better in um, some of these internals of the market noticing that 34 almost 35 percent of our stocks were able to climb up and claw its way back above that 40-day moving average the t2107 pretty much the same situation where we had um, stocks trying to claw their way back up here um, overall but let's keep in mind we still have this massive downtrend in the chart a um, lot of resistance levels for this to uh, break through before we can really start um, suggesting that we're going to be able to pop through that downtrend so a lot of work needs to be done here yet on that on that position let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today now our economic calendar as you can see we've got a lot going on on this and this calendar uh, today we've got PMI manufacturing we've got ISM manufacturing and we've got construction spending now uh, manufacturing has been showing a little bit of um, stiffness here they've been they've been able to hold up pretty well and as long as these, these numbers come in above 50 we're still seeing some growth in that manufacturing sector but we'll want to watch that today because we're starting to see those consumers really being pinched by the high inflation rates out there and it just is getting worse um, throughout the course of the month with energy prices continuing to surge higher um, construction spending is expected to decline so we'll want to keep an eye on that and then just keep in mind we've got a state of the union address tonight where i'm assuming one of the central themes will be talking about inflation and then we're going to have jerome powell over here um, in a semi-annual um, at uh, up on the hill testifying in congress and the senate uh, for the next couple of days. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Remember, we've got um, those mortgage applications that have been in a, a decline. We've got the ADP um, report. We've got some Fed speakers, and we know Bullard has been pushing for a um, a 1%, full 1% increase in March. Um, we'll see if um, that can happen with all of the uncertainty out there, but watch that closely. And then the petroleum status there um, and beige book at the end of the day. So we still have a full, uh, full plate here on that economic calendar to deal with. And when it comes to earnings, we also have a pretty full plate on that earnings calendar. We have um, around two hundred companies reporting today but here's the thing guys we're unfortunately going to run into a bit of a situation where we're just not going to have those big notables that move the market tremendously you guys probably saw um last night uh zoom kind of disappointed um in in its earnings report and we've seen several of those here just recently kind of disappointing um and so there's just been this mix this this quarter where companies have been struggling to provide enough earnings um, results to support the current price of the chart 
And even though they've been relatively good earnings, they're just not supporting those prices. So today we're gonna to have a few things in here in the Notable. If you wanna collect, um, get the full list of Notables, make sure you click that link just below the title of the video. So we're gonna hear from like Salesforce today, CRM, CRM's trying to break that downtrend here in the chart. I do think that is worth keeping an eye on. Anytime we break that downtrend, I call this, we call this the tried and true pattern. That's where we break that downtrend and then if we can prove to hold support in here then I'd look for that entry signal um, in CRM so keep an eye on that we're gonna hear from Target this morning and it looks like Target has done a really good job here in its earnings report this morning popping through that downtrend so there's that uh, pattern again we pop through that downtrend let's see if we can get proof that we can hold some price support in that chart and then we may be off to the races there in Target. So keep an eye on that. We've got uh, JW, uh, JWN reporting, so Nordstrom's um, reporting today. We're gonna hear from uh, some pizza. Domino's will be reporting today. We're gonna hear from First Solar. That's an interesting chart breaking that downtrend as well. Keep an eye on that breaking through a rest or pullback sets up that opportunity in the chart. We're gonna hear from HPE. We're gonna have reports from TWNK. We've got little Twinkies out there. Um, let's see, SRPT is on the list. We're also going to hear from Wendy's. And we're going to hear from um, Weight Watchers. Um, today so keep a close eye on that we've got quite a little bit of retail in the numbers today so watch those closely probably the most notable after the bell um, is going to be Baidu I believe well maybe Baidu reported this morning I could be wrong on that looks like we're getting a nice bump here in Baidu this has been an ugly ugly downtrend however so watch that close let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. And I, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone out there. You guys have been so tremendously supportive of the channel and I truly, truly appreciate it. And um, also just a big shout out and thanks to those of you that continue to support the channel through Buy Me A Coffee link. Um, it's, it's uh, I'm setting up, we're gonna be doing some live um, YouTube things here soon. So thank you to everyone who does do that. They share these videos, they leave notes, on them um, it helps the channel to continue to grow you guys are truly awesome let's take a look at a few of these charts and let's keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you're gonna have to be really really careful with a lot of these charts because the uncertainty out there we can have a really good setup and then whipsaw in the next hour um, you know tripping stop losses or completely reverse the market overnight. So be very, very careful in here as you trade. Plan your risk carefully. I would suggest trading smaller than normal positions because of the volatility, and then also be willing to take those profits faster as we move along. As you guys know, I'm gonna recover some of the same stocks as we did yesterday, but let's take a look at steel here for example steel has been really strong the last few days now i wouldn't want to chase anything in steel u.s steel pretty strong here in that price move just moving straight up but breaking through these resistance levels in the chart now we look for a little rest or pullback where we can engage this upside trend and then there may be some opportunities here take a look at like um, cleveland cliffs man big sharp move to the upside unfortunately we're going to slam right into that downtrend resistance in the chart so perhaps we need a little bit of consolidating rest or something in here before that can pop on through or it pops right on through and then we get that consolidating rest for that next upside move in Cleveland Cliffs. Other metals out there, I do think um, even Alcoa, aluminum is showing quite a little bit, of, quite a, you know, a lot of strength here, showing lots of upside opportunity. I, as we kind of consolidate this rest in here against this trend, watch for that next opportunity for that to move on higher. And then copper, 
um, copper, uh, whoops, not XLF, um, um, FCX. Just had a senior moment there, I guess. FCX really breaking through higher here, breaking some substantial resistance in the chart. Now we are stretched out here in the short term. So once again, guys, this is one for the list. You would wait, you want to wait and see if that can rest or pull back um, for that opportunity for that upside move. So keep a close eye on that. I also think you still want to keep an eye on gold and silver. Um, gold and silver um, had a little pop and drop on it yesterday. Yesterday, but you can see we're firing up a little bit this morning here on gold and silver also showing some some relative strength here so watch those closely metals um, seem to be doing well also anything in that commodity sector or it comes to food take a look at um, mosaic MOS just soaring here in this chart as food crop prices continue to move up and that's largely based on the fact of our oil sector just ripping to the upside because of all of these uncertainties so keep an eye on mosaic any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity you could look at um, cf industries that is another one looking very very strong here in the chart um, anything in the commodity um, um, sector like this DBC commodity um, tracking ETF, um, unbelievable run here in this uh, chart, as you can see, just moving in a beautiful upside move. And it's actually been relatively controlled, just moving uh, to the upside strongly. So food and energy. Um, are very very strong take a look at xle surging to the upside brent crude continues to move up we're seeing lots of energy in these um <laughs> energy stocks uh, i wasn't intending the pun there but um, if you take a look devon devon very very strong exxon mobile eog um just Tons of these um, energy sector stocks are moving higher, and um, I, you know, I think you could go just about anywhere in that sector and find some relatively positive charts um, trying to move on up. Um, CVS is an interesting chart in the fact that we've broken down through support and this rally back up, we're struggling here in this rally back up. So one of the things I'm not gonna talk, uh, I'm, I'm gonna cut this video off here after this, but one of the things we do have to consider are those potential short patterns um, in these charts. We are downtrending in the market. So keep a close eye on those stocks that are rallying back up, showing those potential short patterns setting up in charts because when the stock market falls it usually gets busy and falls you can make more money faster in a short trade than you likely can in an upside position so when the market's downtrending don't fight the downtrend try to stay with those charts that can make you that money on those downside moves so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great results in your trading i know it's an unfortunate situation here in the world we've got a lot of uncertainty out there if you feel that you don't have an edge remember guys cash is a position stand aside protect your capital let this volatility spill off and come back when the market starts to improve. Just remember you're in charge and uh, don't let the market lead you around. So with that, everyone, take care and we'll see you bright and early Wednesday morning. And I wish you all of the best.